Hello, welcome to the North Downey Church of Christ. I'm David Moorhead. I'm glad you are here. If you are able to see me, that's good because uh, I just learned something. I was blocked by YouTube. They blocked my last uh, class. I'm, I must have said some things that I shouldn't say, and they weren't curse words, but only to the government. It's like, it's like throwing water on that wicked witch, and she's like, ah! Well, that's what happened. The government doesn't like certain things, and that's a big story. And we, we have a problem, may I just say this, in our country, that now you have big tech and the government coming together. So they're, if they're able to look at my stuff and whatever I say and try to censor it, uh, they could do that to you too. So just be real careful about it. Uh, I don't know, you got to pray about this type of thing. And uh, it also tells you what your votes get you too. So you got to be careful about all this you gotta stuff. Use code words. Yeah, you got to use code words, okay? Anyway, that's it. We'll put that aside, okay? Um, it's, uh, what day is this? This is the 13th of, uh, is this Friday the 13th? The 14th. The 14th, you scared me. Okay, today's Friday the 14th, 2021. Isn't that amazing? We've made it this far to May. And so we got a lot of things. Uh, we've, we've come by, we're alive, we're well. Uh, and um, see, make sure you take care of yourself. And uh, just for good immunity, try elderberry. Syrup is really good for you besides vitamin C, vitamin D, plus three. Beet juice. And zinc. what kind of juice? Beet. Beech. Oh. Zinc. Beet yeah. juice. Zinc. But what's that? Oh, zinc. Echinacea. Not zinc. And what? Echinacea. And echinacea. Try all of that stuff and drink water and stay home. <laughs> Whatever. So, uh, okay, so anyway, we have people to pray for, lots of concerns as, that are going on throughout our world. Um, you know, every day, like I said, you know, we're, we're seeing more things that are crazy that's going on. I'm not going to go into certain things uh, because apparently there's certain words that tick people off, so I'm not going to use those things. But we do see uh, a lot of things that are going on where, um, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of control going on, verbal control of our of media and things like this and of individuals. We've had some things about the mask mandate, and so I'm not sure if you want to wear your mask or not, yeah. uh, or just put your horn over like this, you know, or just stay home. <laughs> so we, we have those things going on in our lives. Um, and in terms of, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of, is there crime going on? There's a lot of crime going There's on. There's the Israeli and Hamas. Oh, the, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's this is very serious. Is Israel and Hamas, uh, the Palestinians, and uh, are attacking uh, Israel now. Israel has to fight back. They have to protect themselves. The sad thing is that the media is on the side of the Palestinians because they're saying how terrible uh, the Israelis are have been to them, and yet. They, they put their headquarters into hospitals and children's homes and things like this. They put their weapons and arms and bombs and everything in those places, knowing that no one will bomb that. That's something the communists did in Vietnam and all these other places. So it's, it's a little trick that they learn. And so the Israelis have to protect themselves. They had to send rockets into different places. So it's a terrible thing. This thing could erupt into a war. And what's sad about it is that Iran has been uh, fueling this. They're, they're sending rockets to these people in, the, in uh, the Gaza Strip, which is the Palestinian area. And uh, they're, you know, they're, they, they want to uh, extinguish Israel. That's always been their plan. And it's very sad because uh, one thing will lead to another. And what's very sad is that our present administration is now making friends with Iran. These are the very people who are who are funding all these, uh, these weapons and rockets that, that are, were, have been killing our own American soldiers, but also that are threatening the peace in Israel. So we got to keep that in prayer and, uh, you know, what's going on with these people. It's uh, very sad that uh, we're, we're trying to make friends with these folks. Uh, we're, we're, we've given them money. We've given them all this stuff, uh, you know, many years ago under a previous, previous president, and uh, they thought they could bribe their way our side thought they could bribe their way into peace, but it's not working. These people, they want 
to destroy Israel and our country. But that's another thing. It's one thing we want to keep in mind, Kev. Keep praying for our, our country and our people uh, a little more closer to home. In fact, uh, in our church, we've... Uh, what have we learned? We, we're still looking for Fred and Barbara Bailey. Uh, hope we can find Fred and Barbara. If you're watching, give us a call. Call up uh, Robert or something and let them know where you are. Apparently, we've learned that uh, we haven't seen them in many years because they've gotten uh, you know, very disabled in many ways. They just couldn't come here. But we know in the old days, they were very active in the church here. So uh, their phone has been cut off and we tried to get a hold of their son and his phone has been canceled. So... I'm thinking maybe they, they all moved away or something. So let's keep them in our prayers. We have Dennis. we got to keep in our prayers. He's, he has to get his picture taken before he can get back into his uh, apartment, right? And so he has domicile. to do... And what? His domicile. It was his domicile. That's right. And um, who else we got to think? Oscar. Lafania. She's been taking all these treatments. Uh, Oscar. Georgina. Teresa. Chris. Who? Georgina. Georgina. That's right. Hey, Georgina. Mr. Georgina. And Georgina and Tomas, they're, they're both uh, interesting. They're going through some, obviously, their own physical problems, so keep them in our prayers. Um, let me see. We had some good visitors. We had more people last Sunday, which is good. So slowly but surely, people are trickling out of their caves and just coming into the, their, light, their eyes are like this, you know, because they've been in the dark, you know, for so long. Well, the people in China, they're rounding up people, Bibles, audio Bibles, Burning churches and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so China is going back to its old ways. And it's interesting, it, it, it has gained so much from capitalism and yet it's, it's, and it's learned the other ways, gotten a lot of money and it's going after uh, their own people. Whatever he said, Christians. Christians are going after Christians. So, so let's uh, have a word of prayer and then we'll get right into our lesson today. Basic Bible 3. New Testament, we'll be talking about that in just a moment. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we are thankful to you for your blessings, your wonderful uh, way of treating us. You've uh, been good to us. We know that there's lots of challenges in our world. Lots of things are going on. Things are kind of disappointing uh, in our, our government circles where we're worried about uh, uh, things like corruption, stuff like that, but also uh, some very dangerous things are happening between our country our government and a place like Iran, who's bent on destroying Israel, one of our best allies uh, in the Middle East, but also all those people just trying to drive them out. And then also we, so we see something that could develop into a war on both sides. We pray that there may be peace there uh, so that these people will not have to suffer. And, and Father, we, we pray God for our country and the, the challenges that have come here. We're, we're dealing with control of communication, control of uh, you know, media and things like this. And so they're slowly but surely trying to shape the minds of the population. And, and that can be difficult. So we pray for uh, freedom for our, our people. And then, of course, for our own congregation, we think of the people we just brought up. Fred and Barbara Bailey, we don't know where they are. We hope that they are doing well. And we pray for them, whatever they are, wherever they are may be and and for that whole family that hopefully we can locate them and see how everything is going with that that family and also we think of Dennis and uh, he is apparently he's getting better and better and now having the opportunity to return to his apartment or at least be able to hold on to it so we we're glad to hear that we, we're glad that you've you brought him along he's a great guy he is a wonderful brother in Christ he uh, is Whenever he can, he tries to get over here. We know that that's going to be a little more difficult for him and has been over the past several weeks, but we do pray for continued healing and a building up of his spirit, God. We know that's very important too. And of course, Georgina and Tomas and the physical challengers they're going through. Um, Lafania, who is uh, getting treatment at this time and now undergoing radiation treatment. So that's a... Um, that's that's tough too. We you know it, it it can be very effective. We know, but also it can uh, drain a person of energy as well as all the chemi, uh, chemotherapy. So uh, we pray for her. Pray for healing for her, and that you'd help her and help Robert as he ministers to her and the family over there. May they get stronger in in this way. 
Um, Robert's brother, David. And Robert's brother, David. We haven't heard too much about, well, last week, I guess he was still having some trouble talking and, and recovering from his, uh, his stroke. So we pray for him, pray for continued healing uh, for him as well. And Oscar. And Oscar, too. Oscar, yes, thank you. So Oscar is also, um, well, he's in that place where he's lost his mind. It's just he's uh, going into dementia. And so I'm sure he has lots of fear, lots of worry about what's going on in his life. And we pray that you'll comfort him. So guide his father through this study tonight. Thank you, God, for your word. It means so much to us. It's very helpful. And it guides us. It is a light unto our lives. So guide us, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, oh, we, got to, we can't go very much further without our jokes today. And uh, before, before your jokes, there's one more thing. Oh, yeah? On the Hamas. Hamas. The Israel, they interviewed an Israeli guy. He said they're bombing synagogues, which they've never done before. Yeah. And he said it, I don't know if it reminds him or it's, Similar to the night of broken glass. Oh, crystal knot. Yeah. Yes, from Hitler. yes. Yeah, that was a horrible time. You don't know what crystal knot is. It was just a horrible time where the uh, before the war, the Nazis just in mass came in through the Jewish community, dragged people out of their homes, beat them, beat them, may even beaten to death, broke into their homes, stole their things, des destroyed whole shops. It was just a horrible thing. They call crystal knot mean glass. The night of, of the glass that's breaking. So uh, this person was reminded of that, of all the uh, horrible things that are going on in Israel. So let's switch gears real quick. Um, what's a cheerleader's favorite drink? Root beer. It's a root, right? Uh, I want to give a special thanks to Sidewalks for keeping me off the streets. That would be something that someone that's could say. One. That's pretty good. I like that one. Uh, and let's see here. What's a snowman's favorite lunch? An ice burger. That's not funny. Why is a horse like a wedding? They both need a groom. Tumbleweed coming through. Some grooms look like horses. <laughs> okay, and let's see, let me get this. Uh, how do you keep, keep milk from going sour? You leave it in the cow. <laughs> Knock, knock, who's there? Hawaii, Hawaii who? I'm thanks, how are you? Hawaii you. Okay, that was it. I don't want to give you too much because it gets you too excited. So I, I don't want people getting too excited. Okay, so now we're, well, last time, the last two times we, we uh, talked about the Old Testament. The, 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 and once again, we're, we're going to be in the table of contents of our Bible. So we, we spent about the, well, two weeks talking about the, the breakdown of the Old Testament, so the, the logic of it. So you might recall we, uh, we looked at the first five books of the Old Testament as the historical books. Then you had the next set of 12 books, which were the history books of the, New, of the Old Testament, I should say. And nine of those are for, remember, pre, pre what? <laughs> Test time Exodus. at, at pre-exilic, -exil, right? before the exile, and three after the exile. Hey, I, I keep you on your toes now. Then after that, there was five what? There was a question about this last time. <laughs> Why do we have those five? Of all the history, the poetry. the poetry books. So you had Job, Psalm, Ecclesiastes, no, Job, Psalm, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon, right? So you have those, those are the five books, okay? And then we looked at the, at, uh, the, the five major prophets, which are the first one would be... No, no, Isaiah. No, no, Isaiah. It's okay. You didn't know you were going to be tested, did you? No, we don't want to be tested. Oh, you, want to be, you don't want to be tested. Oh, this is one of those schools where we don't test, okay? Right. Isaiah and Jeremiah. And then you had uh, Ezekiel and Daniel, and the one in the middle was called Lamentations. Remember, that was a small book that kind of connected the two because Isaiah and Jeremiah were before the exile, and Ezekiel and Daniel were after the exile when they go to Babylon. So that's, that's five books, okay? Then we go into the last part of the Old Testament, which is the 12 minor prophets. And the reason why they're minor <coughs> is because... They were short. They're short. 
good, see? And the major prophets are major because they're, they're big. In stature. And in stature, yeah, they're big, you know, and the one's small, yeah. And so, and, the, and uh, remember Lamentations, just a little tiny book kind of connects the two, right? And so you have the final 12 books of the Old Testament, which are the minor prophets. And remember this, and I'm sure everyone knows this, but, you know, they're too shy to talk about it, of course. The first nine of those 12 are pre-exile, and the last three are after exile. So just, there we go. Just like history. Just like the history. And so that's the logic. We're looking at the logic of the Old Testament. So now we're going to come to the New Testament. So I'm going to, you know, so right now you just close your eyes very, a little bit. And then I'm going to go, and you're going to see me standing up. Okay, wake up. Okay, wake up. <laughs> Hope you, you weren't asleep. I'm sure. Okay. So we talked about those things. So, just Old Testament. We're going to look at them very quick, our mathematics. We've checked this out on the uh, calculator <laughs> and everything. 39 books of the Old Testament. 27 books in the New Testament, right? And so that comes to 66. You can check that out yourself. But if, if you know, okay. So, so this is what it is, okay? So... I put this number up here, 400 years, because, uh, you know, when, when, we, when we look at the Bible itself, there's, uh, there's usually like one page that separates the Old and the New Testament, right? You have, you have about one page in it, so I get, that's what it is. It's like one page, you know? But in reality, you're talking about 400 years. So let's say 400 years from today, backwards. So that, that would take us into the 1600s, right? That's a long time. 1621, that's when the pilgrims came. Is that what? 1621, yeah. that's when the pilgrims See? came. See? So we're, we're living our time together, right? 1621. So that's a long time, you know, 400 years. So we know that between the last book of the Old Testament, which is, uh, what, what's the last book of the Old Testament, anyone? Starts with the name? Malachi. 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 Or if it's Italian, Malachi. Okay. Okay. So between Malachi and when you get over here, and I'm not going to start, uh, the book of Matthew begins the New Testament, but really it was written a little bit later, right, in terms of time. But you say to Jesus, There is a 400 year gap, 400 years. And so why? Well, basically the world and the people had to be prepared for this time. There's a lot of things that took place over 400, just like now, you know, if we, what was the, since uh, 400 years ago until today, lots of things have happened, right? We, Automobiles and civil, war. civil wars, airplanes, wars, and television, and radio, and all these other things. So lots of things have happened. Well, the same thing here. Lots of things have happened between uh, a lot Mal Malachi, 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 and Jesus. Lots of things have happened, and so some of these things we see trickled into the New Testament when Jesus is on the scene. Suddenly, you find you read about things that you didn't read about in the Old Testament. What are some things you read about in the times of Jesus that you didn't read about in the Old Testament? Well, I'll answer. Or why don't you ask me? What are some things that we read about in the New Testament that we didn't read about in the Old Testament? Ask me the question. What some are, what's, are some things in the New Testament that aren't in the Old Testament? I'm glad you asked that question. Okay, so now here, just a setup. For, I want to okay? say Gentiles. Okay, so now. Here are some names that will, some things you see. First of all, you hear the word synagogue. Okay? You don't see that in the Old Testament, right? You hear about these two names, Pharisees, and then you Sadducees. Okay? You also hear about a man, a family, a man's name is Herod. Okay, never heard about that in the Old Testament. You hear about the Romans, and they're not in the uh, Old Testament, you know. Um, 
What else would you, would be in the New Gentiles. Testament? Gentiles. Gentile. Well, yeah, the word Gentile, and of course we they they had that, but they had another word for Gentile in the Old Testament. But we'll just put this up here. Okay. You also have a place called uh, Samaria. Remember the woman at at the well. Samaria. Okay, that's an S. Okay. So there's a lot of things that are, that these things came up in this 400 year time frame. Now what was going on? Uh, who was in charge? Yes. They came up between there or after Jesus? Uh, no, these came up between here. You know, and so this is what Jesus was dealing with. Okay, by the time Jesus arrives on the scene, he's talking about he's dealing in synagogues. He's attending synagogues. He's meeting this. He's talking to these people called Pharisees. You know, you hear about the Pharisees? They're the bad guys, or and then the really bad guys were the Sadducees, then Herod, and the and the family of Herod, uh, the Romans. I mean, at that time, and when we left the Old Testament, no one heard about the Romans. You were good, huh? You were good. I was good. Okay. Uh, in the Old Testament, no one heard their name Rome. Just to be like, if you went uh, four hundred years. Uh, 400 years backwards, no one ever heard the word United States of America. That, that hadn't been established yet. Uh, lots of things, you know. So, so before the synagogue, it was a temple. Before the synagogue, there was a temple. But remember what happened to the temple. When they were, when they, when all the Jews were taken away and, uh, you know, into Babylon, remember the, ba the Babylonians, they came in and they destroyed everything. They burned down the temple. They took everyone out. They took whatever gold they could find, and boom, it was all over. It was gone. So then, after the 70 years, remember, then he, this is where you get that Old Testament prophecy and everything. The 70 years, there was a remnant of the Jews. You know, what the, what's a remnant? Leftovers. You know, a leftover, or it's not the whole thing. Not all the Jews came back, you know. And, I mean, it's on you. we don't do that today, right? Like... Um, Okay, like we won World War II, right? We, we beat Japan and we beat Germany. If this were like uh, 2,000 years ago, we would have gone in and taken everybody out of Japan and brought them over here. That's how they did things back there, taking everyone out of Germany and brought them over here and mixed them in with our people. And so that's what they did with the Jews. They brought all the Jews over as many as they could and mix, tried to mix them in with the Babylonians so they would lose their identity. And so they kept their identity, but not everyone came back and they came back to the land and they rebuilt the temple. It wasn't as great as the first temple, but they rebuilt the temple. That's what that, when we get to Neo, uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, it's the Old Testament. So now then we have this, all these other things going up since they, since they really didn't have the temple and since, or it was small, it wasn't that great. And Jews were all over the place. Remember you had a whole bunch of Jews left back in, in uh, Iran would be Iran today, in Persia, and uh, in Babylon, which would be Iran today. Uh, you had Jews that were scattered all about, so that by the time the New Testament shows up, and you have Pentecost, you have a number of Jews who came from different parts of the world. So they were in Africa, they were in different, all, all over the place, Egypt, so, and so, yes. So in Malachi time, there was a temple, mm -hmm. and then it turned into a synagogue. And then the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they would have been the high priest and the judges in the Old Testament? Uh, well, they weren't, no. They, they were, uh, you still had the priestly class. They kind of came up as a party, you know, sort of like Democrats, Republicans, and that type of thing. They came up a little bit later. So and there wasn't an equivalent in the Old Testament? Not really. Cause because you had one you, temple with the high priest, and now you don't have one temple anymore. You have many synagogues. And then the Pharisees and the Sadducees kind of came to They came teach. out of that okay. background. But you did have a temple rebuilt. They called it the second temple, but it wasn't. Same. And not everyone lived in the same place anymore like they used to. They were all over the place. So, so this is what they did. And they said, well, we have Jews in different parts of the world. What do we do? We want to keep them Jewish. So you had a thing called the synagogue. The synagogue started at this time. And so you had synagogues everywhere. And to keep the Old Testament law, usually they're within like a, a few, about a mile, within a mile walk and stuff like this. You know, there's Sabbath services and things. So you have the synagogues. You find them in all over places, right? We have them today. We have, I think there's like a, 
a synagogue up on Lakewood Boulevard, just up the street, you know, over there by uh, Pilus. But I think they call it a temple now. But those are the two types. Of, they have different types of Jews now. But anyway, the synagogue purpose was sort of like a Sunday school for us. They, they taught the Bible or they taught Old Testament. So they had all the scrolls of the Old Testament and people would someone and it was just like church today. In fact, we model the church worship service after the synagogue service. That's where we got the idea. So we had, uh, you know, they had someone reading scripture, someone leading prayer, there were songs. Of course, there was no Lord's Supper because, you know, Jesus had tied it. And, and, uh, and then you have someone preaching and then you have closing prayer. So it was pretty much, the, this is how we do it, right? So that was a synagogue. So you find Jesus going into synagogues. Now the Pharisees and the Sadducees were both, they, they, they started off as, uh, well, the Pharisees started off as a very legalistic group because their idea was this. They, they said something then that many Jews have said today after the Holocaust in Germany. They said, never again. Yes, dear. Were they regular members of the synagogue? Or they, like, were they priests? Did they, they come from the Levi clan? No, no, not necessarily. They, they, they came from that. They, they were, I guess, leading church people. I guess many of them would come from the Levites, I suppose. But they, they were leading pe the leaders. So okay. it would be like an elder today. Yeah, I guess it would be like an elder today. And they would, many of them were educated. So they, uh, by the time, uh, on Paul's time, they had like a university for them. They had like a, a, a train, a, a place to train these people. And the Apostle Paul was a Pharisee at one time. The reason why they, they started, and part of the reason for this is that they, they came up with the idea that it's just like the Jews said after the Holocaust in World War II. They said, never again, we'll never let this happen again. And they basically said, we'll never get to that place like they had in the Old Testament days where they got into idolatry and they... And, uh, you know, they were, they had just fallen away. Uh, I mean, they looked back on that history and said, we don't want that ever to happen again. So they became really strict. They said, we're going to follow what the Bible says, right? The Pharisees were that group. And they, so today many of us might be Pharisees, I suppose. But, but uh, they were the group who were staying strong to the Bible and they believed in angels, remember? They believed in God, they believed in the spirit, they believed in afterlife, they believed that when you die, you go to heaven, that type of thing. So these were the believers, right? It was along the way that they became a little too tight, a little too controlling, so that they start off with a good idea. It's sort of like us, you know, they can start off with an idea, everyone comes to church, we're gonna worship it, we can turn into a cult. Like, uh, I'll call you up every day, so what are you doing? You'll say, well, I'm eating, uh, what, what, I mean, having dinner, what are you eating for dinner? Uh, you know, that's sinful to eat that kind of food. You, you need to take that off your plate. And like then, a Scientologist. And, huh? Like Scientologist. Scientology. Yeah, and that, that's what a cult does, right? And, and so, you know, uh, you, you know, I saw you walking down the street, and you saw that movie theater, and you looked up at the marquee. That's wrong, you're sinful. You know, that type of thing. That's what they were doing. They, they, they started off great, but a number of went to that place where they, they started putting more and more and more control on their people. And that's what Jesus complained about. So then you had the Sadducees, and they didn't believe much of anything, but they were the political power. This was politics for them. Would they be the Democrats today? I guess they would be Democrats today. I don't know if they'd be Democrats. It sounds like it, right? But these are the people that they didn't believe in heaven. They didn't believe in angels. They didn't believe in all these things. But they liked the power of the, what they call the Sanhedrin, and that's another term we, we have here. That's another, the Sanhedrin. I'm sorry, we're going through this before we're going through Old Testament. I just wanted to get, we're, get you ideas. So we say, oh, these are all these things are part of that. So they, the Sanhedrin was like their little Congress that they got together, that they would have in, in Jerusalem. They'd make up more and more rules it was a Sanhedrin put Jesus to death, right? Sanhedrin that, uh, you know, beat up Paul and all this. So Paul was a member of this. And so uh, at one time. So, but the Sadducees, they had the power. They were of the rich folks too. They, they were of the, uh, of the wealthy. These people didn't care too much if they're wealthy or not, you know. But the Sadducees were wealthy. Then you had Herod. And the, and the family of Herod goes all the way back uh, into this 400-year time. 
And they, uh, they, be, they were a wicked family, but they were politically connected, kind of a half-breed type of person, half-Jew and all this. He was, his family was kind of placed in charge of that area. So guess what he did? He built the temple, uh, he, or, or they call it the second temple. <coughs> he added on to it. He had a major project. And remember how long it lasted? Uh, it took 40 60. years. Remember, well, it was a 40-year project. That's another 40. That's another 40, and a government project, may I add. Okay, but it was, he built this thing to please the Jews. And none of the Jews did not like that. They did not like him. And it's sort of like having a... A stimulus a, check. Yeah, a stimulus check. I guess having like someone else who doesn't believe what you believe build your church. You know, and he said, I don't know if I want to do that or not, you know. So he had this great big temple, uh, edifice and all that, that he built. But he was also a pretty murderous guy. He could, If he didn't like you, he'd kill you. Remember? He, he was the one that uh, got to see Jesus. He was the one that beat up Paul and, and, and uh, tried to have James killed. He was, you know, he went after all the Christians, things like, he was a tough guy. And remember one time he, he was out there preaching and talking and, and he got struck because somebody said, hey, he, you sound like you're a god. He said, yes, I am. He goes, ah, worms. I always get dewormed when he came. So Herod, when... When David was king and then Solomon, and then they split up uh -huh. into two types, two lineages of kings, mm -hmm. was Herod that other no way. lineage? Way down the line. But he came from that no, opposite of it's Solomon. sort of a mixed type of guy, yeah. See, by this time, a lot of Jews forgot their heritage, too. They forgot what family they were with. You know, someone knew some things, but a lot of things got mixed up at that time. But you're, I mean, he was like way down. You're, you're it's sort of like comparing. Uh, 18, no, I'm saying he came from that lineage. That area, he yeah, he off. probably has some connected in that. Because yeah. all these, yeah. and then it ended up being Herod. He wasn't the line of Solomon. Yeah. So the next thing, the Romans. How the Romans show show up here? You might recall the prophecy that was made in the Book of Daniel, the dream that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had. He said, "I had this dream." And he called all of his advisors over who, were, who could interpret dreams and said, I had this incredible dream. Could you tell me what it means? And they said, yeah, well, tell us what you dreamed. And he says, wait a minute, you're the guys who can figure this out. You tell me what I dreamed. And they said, we can't tell you what you dreamed. <laughs> well, if you don't tell me what I dreamed, for you. And they said, well, hey, give us some time. And they, and they said, oh, yeah, we got a guy over here who can interpret things like that. And they got Daniel. So they got Daniel. And he came up and, the dream, and he talked to the king and the king said, uh, you know, I need you to tell my dream. And he said, you know, there's a God in heaven. Very interesting. He said, there's a God in heaven who can do this, not me. And so God gave him this, gave him the interpretation of the dream. And so he said, here's your dream. You had this, you, you dreamed about this great big image. And, uh, you know, the top of the image was gold. And then the other part, you know, it's broke four parts and you had the next part that was more like silver and then you went on down and there was another part and then there's another part, four parts, okay? And, he, and the guy says, yeah, yeah, that's what I was dreaming. What do you, what's that mean? He says, well, good news and bad news, you know, you're at the head, okay, you're at the top, right? But one day, your kingdom is going to fall. And that would be, what kingdom was it? Babylon. Babylon. So, so remember, remember the four kings. I'm gonna put up here. Does this work up there? Yeah. Babylon. Okay, that was the first king, right? That was the first kingdom. That was a prophecy. And they said there's another kingdom that's gonna come after you. He said, what's that? Well, he didn't know the name, but he said, I'm gonna give you the name. But we know what the name is. Persia, better known as, uh, you know, Iran. <laughs> okay. Persia, what is going to come after? And we know that because there's this big party that they're having. You remember they're having a big party. Nebuchadnezzar's gone, and Belshazzar is the king, and they're saying, "Bring out the we're getting drunk and everything. Bring out the cups from the temple." That they, and they're pouring. They're going like this, hurrah! And then he looks over and he sees something on the wall, and he starts shaking. And I think he may have lost control of something. I won't go into. It, and he saw a disembodied hand writing on the wall. And uh, basically, he couldn't, he said, what is this? 
Because wouldn't you do that if you saw it? <laughs> and so he, uh, they called in Daniel, and Daniel interpreted it, basically saying, your time is up. Um, give me the paraphrase of it. And the Persians came in, killed him, took over the place. So who's the next kingdom? Greece. So, Greece, Alexander the Great, took over the whole world, da, 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 you know, this stuff. The Greeks went in, and they did one thing that was very important to our Bible. If it wasn't for the Greeks, your Bible, you, who knows, we, it would have been a mess. But God used this thing to lay the groundwork for us, to, for us so that he's thinking about us in 2021, that we'd have our Bibles, and that, that one thing is the fact that the Greek language became the common everyday language of the world. Okay? And why is that important? Because there are all kinds of languages everywhere, but then because of Alexander the Great, he was able to kind of solidify everything. It's sort of like us if we went everywhere in the world. So you have to learn English. <laughs> they, he taught everyone Greek. Okay, and the Greek empire was very strong and all that. So by the time we get to the to Romans and we get to the time of Jesus, and that the, the fourth kingdom would be Rome. And so by the time we get to this, everyone's speaking Greek. And so if you were push it further, no, stand on the okay. So everyone's speaking Greek. That means uh, you know you may you may be from uh, you may be Aramaic, you speak Aramaic and Greek. You may be from Rome, you speak Latin and Greek. Uh, you may be from Greece, you're going to speak Greek and Greek, I guess you know. But wherever you are, you're going to speak Greek because and everything's written in Greek. You buy something, they give you a receipt. It's in Greek. By the way, that's how they found about uh, the uh, a lot about the Greek language by archaeology. They found old sales receipts, things written in Greek. <laughs> Old sales receipts. And so everything's written in Greek. So why is that important? Because it's Greek to me. It's Greek to you, right? And the reason why this is important is that you have a uniform language where the Bible can get out, the Word of God can get out to everybody. So they don't, they, they don't have to write 10 different books. They can get out to everybody. So what do, you, what do we call this? Timing. And timing is part of, is so important. When we're talking about timing... God's timing, we would say, well, why didn't he take care of this back then? No, they were not everyone spoke Babylonese, right? Or Persianese or something like that. But now we get to Greek and everyone does. And so the timing was just right. So when Jesus came on the scene, he spoke Greek, he spoke Aramaic, he spoke Hebrew, right? And so when they went out the gospel, there it is. And so now it's the providence. New, it's providence, that's it. And so that's why. In the New Testament, it was originally written in Greek, right? It wasn't written in Hebrew. Now, there, there's a little bit of Aramaic in it. It's written in Greek. So that that means it was more accessible to the population of the world. Isn't God smart? <laughs> what a smart way. So I've always said God's pretty smart. And that's how it works out. So this is why I gave you this background, and our time is almost up, right? Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. But this is why I wanted to give you this background so that when we're going into the New Testament and we're learning all these different things, we got to remember, so yeah, uh, yeah, if it hadn't been for this, we wouldn't have this. So God always turns a bad thing into a good thing. He turns a bad thing into a good thing. It's, uh, you know, if it's, it's what we have today. It's like the language is so important to have this. Uh, otherwise, we may, may not be speaking English because Greek is at, is is a is a uh, English is a derivative from Greek. Lots German. of excuse me, German and well, you have Greek, German things like that. German comes from Greek. Uh, may English words English words that we use today are Greek uh, in in uh, in roots Greek roots and things like this. Spanish. Very strong, you know, lots of Greek words that are translated into Spanish and you got Latin, things like this. But that's why this, this is so important, okay? So next time, when we go, we're gonna go through the New Testament <clears throat> and I'll just give you a little 
heads up on this. Okay, we'll look at, we're going to, hopefully we'll get through this. We're going to look at the first, if you're in the uh, contents, you look at the first four books of the New Testament, and those books are what they call the Gospels, right? They're actually called, if you look at the uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, those are called the Synoptic Gospels because they pretty much are, they, they're, they're similar in many ways, actually S-Y-N, synoptic. And then you have the book of John, right? And uh, when we talk about the Greek language and we talk about how God kind of set that up, think about Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Who, why did you have four gospels in the first place? Wouldn't one be enough? What if we just had Matthew? That'd be pretty good. But notice this, when we get to Mark, you see, it's, it's there, but it's a shorter book. Matthew's like, well, he, he's going into detail. You get into Mark, real quick, I mean, it's what, 16 chapters or so? You get into Luke, you're saying, wow, this is a very interesting little book, you know? And they're all three are different because they had three different audiences. Matthew was written for the Jew. I mean, the rest of us like it. I read it, I love Matthew, right? Read it. But he's trying to make a case to the Jew. And then Mark, he's trying to make a case to the Romans about Jesus. It was written for the Roman, right? Luke was written for the Greeks. Because, and as you, and as you look at Luke, he says, oh my, this is very interesting. He's talking about feelings and stuff like this. Matthew is very, well, this is what happened. And Mark says, hey, let me give you the short version of this <laughs> because the Romans are in a hurry. They're like us. Militaristic. They're, they're militaristic. I don't have time to talk to you. I've got a nation to conquer. Okay? And so Mark is like, okay, well, let me give you the short version. Boom, boom, boom. And he goes through. Luke is more romantic. And he says to the Greeks, ah, yes. But you know, Mary treasured these things in her heart. Remember that? They're it was emotional. Luke would say that. Excuse me? They're emotional. Very emotional, very moving. Very interesting. And then John is unlike those. He tells, he's a good storyteller too. But his, it's, he wrote this when he was a very old man, about 90 years old. And he writes about great detail what happened when he was like a 30 year old man. How many of us can do that? So that's something we didn't, oh yeah, there is a Bible, there is a verse. I didn't want you to go without a verse. And if you would turn over here to John chapter 20, <clears throat> Uh, verse 20, uh, 30 and 31. Okay, so I hope you, I hope you appreciate this. Right? You get, see, what you're doing is that you're getting um, you're getting background here. Who else gives you background? Huh? Oh, you know what I heard too that there's the three books Matthew, Luke, and Mark because Jewish they said you need witnesses to make mm -hmm. something true and legal. You need three witnesses. That's right. And there you you have three, three witnesses, witnesses right there. That's a very good point. It's uh, John chapter tw uh, 20, verse 30 and 31. And notice what it says there. John gives you a reason. It's interesting. Uh, you know, usually you put this in the front of a book. This is what I'm writing this about. But he brought you all the way through. The, he take, he's kind of tricky this way. He takes you all the way through all these chapters. And then he says, by the way, there's a reason why I wrote this. This is what he says here. Uh, uh, verse 30 and 31. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. He said, I'm, in fact, if you get to the next chapter, he says, all the books in the world couldn't, I mean, he didn't have, he couldn't write them all down. He'd still be writing today, you know. So he says, they're not all written down. But he says, but these, verse 31, are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So he tells you right off, this is why I wrote this book. I wrote these things so that when you read them, you would believe that Jesus is the Christ and that by believing you'll have eternal life. Isn't that something? So he tells you right off, this is why I wrote this thing. And this is why I wrote this book. And remember, you're in a scroll and it's coming along. Okay, wow, that's a great story. Boom. By the way, the reason why I'm doing this is I want you to be a, I want you to be a believer. I want you to be a Christian. And so that's, that's what that's about. So just want to put that out there. And so we, were there any questions or comments? So when we go to heaven, we'll be able to hear all those stories he didn't write down. I hope so because there's, there's a lot of things 
uh, they kind of dangle some things in, in the Bible about this that just like he says there, you know, there's a lot of things he did. And I'm like, wow, what did he, what else did he do? So I when know, I get I to heaven, to Melchizedek. we'll talk to Melchizedek. He'll be yeah. walking around and uh, say, hey, what's up? You know, and, but we'll, we'll get to hear what other things did you do? And they'll be able to tell us a lot of other things that we didn't, they didn't write down. They probably would have been better about it if they, if they had like a, a cell phone back then, they were able to keep everything. We're going to stop right now and close your eyes and then we'll be right back. There you go. Okay, we're back. <laughs> so I hope that was helpful to you. The reason why we do this, this is really important. I mentioned this last week. A great investment is a good Bible. I mentioned this last week. Don't, don't go cheap on your Bible. It, you, you know, you wouldn't go cheap on your TV, right? You don't go cheap on all the things you put on your car or whatever. And your phone, you got a little smartphone. Yeah, I know, you spend a lot of money for that. Why get a little cheap Bible, you know, that, that you can barely read and all this stuff. If you're gonna get serious about it, get a good Bible. I'm not talking that it has to have great leather and all this stuff, but something you can read, something that has, and I'm gonna go over this more next time, something that has like an, uh, a concordance in it, Something has like a little Bible dictionary so that you can check things out, right? And the other thing is to invest in your knowledge, your Bible knowledge, so that you can talk about these things. So when somebody comes and they, they make some statement, don't say, hey, go see David about it. You may be on your own. And uh, it's important for all of us to be good Bible students so that we can answer some of the questions or at least know where to look. It, you know, this whole idea about the preacher being the, you know, the treasury of all knowledge and the rest of us are dumb. No, that won't fly. Mm -mm. That, that just doesn't work. And that's not biblical either. That's not in the Bible at all. And it's basically taught that all are believers and we're all priests. Okay, do you feel ashamed of yourself? No, I don't want to shame you. I like you. Okay. Did I get, was that bad? No, don't be ashamed. I like you. I love you a lot. All right. But no, it's just a little warning, just kind of encourage you. Just want to encourage all of you to do that, like me. I have to encourage myself. So we're going to sing a song. Uh, and what this is all about, <coughs> and it's called The Old Rugged Cross. You probably have heard of this. It's an old song, right? It's a great song. So 645, The Old Rugged Cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above, to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. In that old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross, 
Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To that old rugged cross I will ever be true its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me some day to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Till my trophies at last I lay down, I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. Okay, great song. That's an old song. It's an old time. Wonderful song. You remember that, I'm sure. John Cash sings it. Excuse me? John Cash sings it. John, Johnny Cash sings that. Yeah, absolutely. There's, it's a wonderful song. Well, we're going to have the Lord's Supper this time, and so we have this, of course, and we do remind you that uh, if you live in the area and that type of thing, and uh, member here, of course, if you want to take part in Lord's Supper and you don't have these at home, give us a call. Robert will be happy to supply that for you. And uh, if you are in another country, another state, another city that's far away, you can always, I, you might be able to purchase these things online, I guess. But also, if you want to just get, get some Welch's grape juice and, and uh, what's it called? Matzo. Get that and break it off. You have that with us. That, that's a good thing. If you are not a member of the church, you don't know much about what this is. Uh, basically, it's to remember the body, uh, the broken body of Christ on the cross and uh, the, the blood of Christ. He told us to do this as often as we take it. So very important. So we're going to pray for both of these at this time. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this time that we can uh, study your word and and uh, look at the background of, of the Bible that it really gives us that sense of uh, where we are in, in, in terms of God's word. And so we're thankful, God, for that. But most of all, the most important thing is besides the Greek and besides all these, these are vehicles to get us to where we need to go. Uh, these are things that we can do, that we can take to learn about Jesus, to learn about who he is and what he's all about and, and why he died on the cross and, uh, and it touches our hearts. And so it's because of that that uh, many of us have become Christians. And it's because of that there are people who are watching and concerned that they would like to become Christians or maybe they didn't know why they're Christians. And so this is important, Father. And we thank you, God, for the bread that represents the broken body of Christ. It is so precious to us. We may, some may even feel unworthy to take this. We know that, Father, all of us are unworthy, but you make us worthy because of this. So we take the bread and then we take the cup that represents the blood of Christ spilled on the cross for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yeah, take the bread. Well, um, we've come to the end of there, but now we also have our time of offering. And so, uh, as we say all the time, you know, if you if you like to provide a, a contribution, you're welcome to do that. Of course, uh, you can mail it in. Uh, we have our address that you'll get by. We, it's a P.O. box. Don't send it to our, our living address, our, our actual 
address on the street, uh, 8836 Lindell, because it will never get to us. They'll, it's like we don't exist that way, I suppose. But the P.O. box is important, so use that. And of course, um, you have that donate button you can push, or come here Sunday and join us, and uh, you'll be able to give then if that's what you'd like to do. You give whatever the Lord touches your heart to do. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for our possessions, for our material things, for life, uh, for wonderful as you've given us freedom. You've placed us in this uh, wonderful free country so that we can uh, have these times together. So we thank you for that, God. We pray for your blessings upon the gift and the giver and that you may multiply its effect and that the uh, the kingdom may benefit because of it. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And we have one more song. We've become a two-song two church now, two-song service. And, uh, and it's okay, we can, it's number 684, This World Is Not My Home. Uh, and this is like a, I don't know, would you say it's a toe tapper? <laughs> but it's, it's one of those, dun, dun, uh, it came out, it's, it, I think it came out of the 30s. And, it had, and I think someone explained it to me. It, they, they kind of put it to the tune of another song, but it seems to work. It's a great song. This world is not my home. <clears throat> this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, oh Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song of sweetest praise drifts back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I told you that's a toe tapper. <laughs> Is that a great song? Can I get you excited? Yeah, I, I remember uh, G Jim Bayless would lead that. I think John led this song several times, and he just had a, I like, it's a great song. So, um, and remember, this world is not my own. I'm just, we're just passing through. We are pilgrims, as the Bible tells us. Okay, so uh, we, oh, should I, should I tell who's here? Okay, I guess I should tell who's here. I don't have a John oh, we don't have a John picture. So, you, John is a ghost right now until <laughs> we get his picture. So you're going to have to imagine that he's here. All right, so we'll have to get him, but uh, we will later on. So first of all, we have Ruth who's here. I always do this. Ruth is here. <laughs> and then Cindy is here. I'm glad everyone sits in the same place every week. <laughs> I'd be mixed up. Creature <laughs> yeah, it's a creature habit. Uh, so Cindy's here. Judy's here. And John is here. I guess you just put a cutout, <laughs> like a space or something. John's here. <laughs> Linda's here. Mary's here. Joe is here. I'm pointing this way because I'm, there's his, his videos here. Hi, Joe. So Joe's here. Hey, he's waving back. And uh, Ashi's here. And the Holy Spirit's here. I don't know where, but he's around here somewhere. <laughs> he's, around here. 
He's all around. Could be sitting right here. Who knows? But all around us, and that's a good thing. And so that's what Jesus said. Two or more are gathered. Boom. There we are. So uh, I hope that you enjoy this and uh, keep reading your Bible. Uh, as I said, we're going through the New Testament, and that might be a little easier to read, uh, more exciting, because we, we do a lot of that, and we'll put that together next week. But let me read this to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let us pray, our Heavenly Father. Um, again, we are thankful for this time that we have together. It's a great song to remind us uh, you know, we're just passing through, Father. We know this. We, we have uh, attachments to things in this world, but we're just passing through. We need to be reminded of that because one day we will be up there and it will be a glorious day, not only to reunite with uh, all of our brothers and sisters who've gone on before us, um, new bodies, new lives, and that type of thing, and but also to hear all those stories. That's going to be a grand experience. So we'll just... I don't know, just imagine we're sitting down and, and uh, saying, well, tell us all the things that you wanted to tell us, John, and maybe he'll be able to tell us all those things. And that's something to look forward to. In the meantime, Father, we ask for your blessings on all of us. Uh, may we treasure the things in your word, understand it, be able to talk about it, be able to study it and talk about it and share it and, and defend it because it's all important, because it's this important treasure that we have in this life and on this earth. Ask for your guidance, Father. Bring us home safely. May we have a good, safe weekend. May the following week be a good, safe week as well as a good week to honor you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. We will see you next time.